welcome back. Today we're zooming. Zoom. Um, sort of. Not really. Um, we're zooming around a bank track. Bank tracks are like this, you have them in NASCAR all the time, right? They're like, they're banked. Okay, I don't know how else to say it. They're at an angle. Um, and they're interesting, right? Because you start, when you're at an angle to something, you start introducing a vertical component and a horizontal component. Uh, and we need to take these two components into account when we're talking about the, the net sort of reaction force that the car is experiencing on the track. And it's not just a car. So you can have like an aeroplane which is banking as it turns in, in a circle. Um, it's applicable to lots of different situations and the math is something that we need to know and understand. So check out this tutorial video because it will help you do that. Hopefully it's really helpful for you. Okay, welcome back. So let's, um, let's, let's talk about friction for a little bit. Let's talk about banked tracks and, and what that means in terms of, of circular motion. So we've got a nice NASCAR racetrack over here, right? Very cool. It's a nice NASCAR racetrack, okay? And you can see that the, 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 the curve here is banked, okay? So that means that it's kind of sat at an angle. Um, and when we're dealing with friction in particular, the centripetal force is provided by a specific component, okay? Um, so in the case of friction, the centripetal force, I've put it here, is provided by the horizontal component of the normal contact force that occurs between the tires and the road surface, okay? Now, that is that is quite important, and it's something that is shown nicely in the diagram here, okay? So we can see that the friction is what provides this, this here, this horizontal component of the normal contact force, which is here, okay? And what else do we see? Well, we see this, the acceleration, okay? The centripetal acceleration, okay? Is, is acting in the same direction as the horizontal component of the normal contact force. And that is a, effectively our rate of change of velocity, okay? So the rate of change of velocity acts in the same direction as the centripetal force here, which is provided by the horizontal component of the normal contact force, which is here. So that diagram really helps things become a little bit clearer, okay? And the reason that bank surfaces are so useful, okay, is because they allow for much higher speed travel, okay? Because that component of friction becomes a little bit more, uh, it, it, it increases in magnitude. So here is a question for you. Right, maybe this is uh, something that you can tackle, but we're going to do it together. It says that you need to calculate the speed at which the car has to travel in order to achieve the bank curve shown. And it says, assume that the car has a mass of two and a half tons, the angle is uh, theta is 30, and the car has um, a distance of eight meters from the track center. Okay, cool. So to make this a bit easier, I'm going to add these diagrams, right, where you've got effectively what was in our previous slide, right? What we see here is something that's gonna help us break down this question and, and, and make it a bit easier to understand. So we've got mg, which is our weight due to gravity. Okay, and then we have fny, which is our vertical component of our, of our reaction, our normal force, right? And that is the same in magnitude as mg, okay? Newton's third law, right? So we can say that FNY is equal to MG, which is equal to two and a half thousand times 9.81. Sorry, my handwriting is not brilliant. Okay. So we've already found FNY, which is fantastic. Okay. Now, the next step is going to be to get to here, right? Because in order to find the velocity, we have to use this equation right f equals mv squared over r but we can't find v without first finding f and we know that the centripetal force in this instant is coming from the horizontal component so we need to get from here all the way to here before we can even attempt to find the velocity okay and the way that we can do that is honestly just through kind of through looking for the opposite so the opposite is going to be equal to f and x which is equal to sine of the angle multiplied by the hypotenuse, which is Fn. And then we found Fnx, okay? So we've now found it, right? Which means we can go forward and we can calculate our velocity, okay? 
So if we say that fnx is equal to mv squared over r, we simply say that fnx r divided by m square root is equal to v. And we plug in our numbers and we have velocity. Okay, so fairly long winded, much more complicated than any other question we've attempted, but certainly doable, certainly doable. Okay, and that actually applies to all sorts of questions. So this is a, an aeroplane that's doing a banked horizontal circle, and I'm not going to do this one. I'm just going to let you guys do it. But one thing I will say is there are lots of, there is actually a different way of tackling these sorts of questions. Um, so when we're dealing with, similar to our conical pendulum, when we're dealing with these sorts of questions, um, we can actually use this equation, where v is equal to the root of tan theta multiplied by rg. Okay, um, That's me rearranging equation, an equation that uh, we got to in our conical pendulum video. Um, this is effectively another way of finding the velocity that something is traveling okay, in a, in a banked curve. Um, provided that the angle that you're investigating is relative to the vertical component, okay, not relative to the horizontal component, okay, it has to be relative to the vertical component, like it was in our previous question and like it is here. Um, so that's a bit of a shortcut. Uh, I might do a separate video on that, but for now, I'm going to end it there, and I hope that that's been as helpful as it can be. But this is kind of how we tackle these more complicated banking questions. Okay, hopefully that helps you understand the maths that is behind a banked track or any sort of any sort of banking situation where there's a, an angle involved. Um, it's not super intuitive, it's slightly complicated, and I would thoroughly recommend drawing the free body force diagram every single time uh, because it helps you kind of just not make those silly mistakes. In the meantime, please like and subscribe and share the video because it helps us get more quantum content to you guys. And that's really just what we want to do. We just want to make good, high quality content that will help you get you through your exams, but also appreciate and enjoy the subject for what it is. But yeah, until then, I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye guys.